Welcome, Claire. Hey, thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Will you tell people a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, so um, my name is Claire Maraid. I'm from Philadelphia, PA, born and raised, um, and I'm the front woman of Breaker, which is a new traditional heavy metal band, um, but our influences come from all over. So we got some glam, thrash, traditional, a bunch of stuff in there. I think there's something that everybody would like. So oh, amazing. Yeah, um, I like just learned about your band recently, and we live in the same city, so obviously very recently. Um, how long have you guys been working together? Um, it's been about a year. So we started, um, I found them through a Craigslist ad. Because uh, I was like, I've always wanted to like be in like a metal type cover band because it's always been like a passion of mine, but I've never really had an outlet for it. Mm -hmm. So whenever they posted their song list, and it had like Wasp and Kiss and all this stuff that I love, I was like, Oh, I should totally go audition for this. Um, and I auditioned, we were doing covers. Um, and we just started performing shows back in September. And now we're working um, more so on our original material. Oh, that is so exciting. When did you release that single that I see you have a, a YouTube video for? We released it back in January, uh, January 6th, I believe. So um, that was the same day that we played a show with a Dio cover band. And it was also my uh, birthday weekend. So oh. it all came out around the same time. Happy belated. It's not that long ago at all. It's like yeah, last Thank month. you. And also, I got to say, I'm proud of myself for getting you on here this fast. I must really have an ear to the ground. So, no, what you're doing is incredible. Thank you. I am really excited about this work because um, it's not just like showcasing everybody and bringing everybody together and helping musicians find each other. It's also like a time capsule. And like, this is the only 2024 when these people are going to be working on this stuff. So I'm super mm -hmm. excited about everything that this can be. Um, so let's jump into your questions. So when did you first realize that you loved metal music and you wanted to create more of it? Um, so rock and roll is like my first love in many ways. Um, I come from a family of Irish immigrants. And when I was growing up, like my dad and, and my uncles were always in the house playing music. Um, I often credit the Queen Live Aid performance as like what sparked my need to perform like when I was like five or whatever. Um, and my mom threw me into like a theater group like right after that. And I was doing it up until now, like ever since I was like seven. Um, but my uncle Martin, he was a huge influence with me. I thought he was the coolest person ever. He loved like Black Sabbath. He's seen Iron Maiden and all these countries. Like he's seen them more times than I can even count. Um, Judas Priest, all those bands. Um, my dad loved like the Cranberries and Metallica. So I got a lot of that from him. Um, and then in the 2010s, me and my brother got really into like the emo, like hard uh, post hardcore stuff that was happening around then. So every summer we would go to Warp Tour, um, which introduced me to like the whole going to rock shows thing, like getting thrown around in a pit and, you know, first time trying all the stuff. Um, and then from there, it kind of became like, I need to know everything about this genre. So I got super into Kiss. Um, Kiss is probably my favorite band. Um, in high school, I got more into like the thrash metal stuff because I was hanging out with the guys in battle jackets. So um, been to a lot of Slayer shows. Um, all around, like metal has always been my thing. But I kind of had a little bit of self-doubt with it because you, you don't see a lot of girls doing it and also like I felt like a dork I'm like I'm in theater so like I can't really do this stuff even though you know whenever I was home I wasn't singing the theater stuff I was at home like doing Motley Crue and Kiss and all this stuff so um being in a band now and having that outlet it's like why wasn't I doing this the entire time you know oh uh, yeah you know that is like a topic that I think it's hard not to explore like why aren't girls pursuing that when they get the initial feeling that they want to and mm -hmm. we all get messages from society and women get their own particular set of messages and um there's a message in the scene that we have to overcome uh but you know uh, there's a lot of complicated things about that 
<laughs> I'm like, not sure how much I want to talk about it. I like would rather focus on what's good, but I also don't like to ignore it. Could go on forever. That's like a whole other separate thing. Yeah. Yeah. There's just like a balance where like it should be addressed in this show, but it also can't take over. So, um, but yeah, um, I think that it's super cool that you have a theater background and now you're performing metal. I'm excited to see what that's like live since it's going to be so much easier for me to see your band than anybody else's. <laughs> I'm super excited to get get over there and see something. When's the next show? So the next show is 420 at Century Bar. Um, we're going to be playing with Eyes of the Living. I believe they're also from Philly. They're like more thrash. And then there's this band Unknown. Um, they're coming all the way from Massachusetts. And they mm -hmm. also have like a kind of like classic heavy metal sound that comes from a bunch of different influences. So I'm very, very excited to be playing with them. And it's going to be our first show with all original music. So that'll be our first time showcasing everything that we got. That is so exciting. Exciting. Oh, where is Century Bar? So it's like Gray's Ferry. Kind of like oh. South Philly area. It's a very small bar, but um, I've been to plenty of shows there. Okay, and uh, awesome. always good vibes. Nice. I'm I'm like not far from Gray Ferry. Um, so if you could collect three vinyl records in history, what would you like to have? That's crazy. I, I've been thinking about this question a lot because um, I do have a vinyl collection, and I feel like it's pretty good. It's got like pretty much all the stuff I like. There's like some niche records in between where it's like I would love to have it like um I haven't got a good copy of Rubber Soul by the Beatles that's probably like my favorite Beatles album I don't got that um thrash metal records like every time I see like an OG of one of those they go for like hundreds of dollars mm -hmm. so I probably say I want Bonded by Blood by Exodus um okay. that'd be a really cool album to have and then um I gotta buy Tower Shock to the System on vinyl because I'm obsessed with that album right now, and I still haven't bought it. So I, th this was my reminder to get it. Um, is that the newest one? The newest Tower album? Yeah, it's like their full length. So the drummer of Tower lives in Philadelphia. I didn't know that. He's going to be so mad that I forgot his name right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway... Uh, yeah, so let's go crash a tower show. I know that they're playing in Ben Salem soon. Yeah, that's gonna be like it's it's like not next Friday. It might be actually it might be next Friday. Yeah. Okay, Keith is the drummer's name. Sorry, Keith. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, okay, so um. All right, so those are great three. I'm sure that you can get that tower record at their show, so let's make it a mission. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so if you could play a tour with any three bands, dead or alive, who would you choose? Um, Kiss, but it would have to be not this, like, they're, like, pushing these, like, AI characters now, because, like, they just did their last show, but it wasn't their last show, because they're going to AI characters, whatever. But it would have to be, like, the... OG Kiss lineup, like I'd want Ace Frehley and Peter Chris to be there. Um, Queen and Adam Lambert, um, I was like kind of like out there. Um, I don't know if my other band members would want to play that show, but Adam Lambert's like my favorite singer ever, and it would just be such an honor to share a stage with him. Um, and Tower, I really want to play a show with Tower. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to be able to play a show with Tower since they're just in Brooklyn. It's like a piece of cake for you guys to play a show together i'm sure we'll, we'll go find keith and we'll just like tie him up and tell him what you want so um, he deserves it so um not that i can remember his name but um looking back what was a big decision you made that turned out to be a great choice Ooh. so um we've already talked about it. i have a background in theater been doing it since i was a kid um, I actually went to college for musical theater. Uh, I graduated in May of 2022. So that whole post year of college up until I started working with Breaker, I was auditioning like crazy. Like I thought like, this is the only thing I'm good at. This is what I can do. Um, so I was showing up to all these auditions and I wasn't getting cast and I wasn't hearing anything back. And then the shows that I was getting offered, it was like, you're going to do like 90 hours of rehearsal time and you're going to get paid like 10 bucks in the end. So like, that's not really fair. And then just like the amount of like shame and like 
crap I felt after like, you know, putting everything out there for these like men in suits to, you know, tell me I wasn't good enough to be in a show or whatever. It was just really weighing me down mentally. And like, I, I didn't even feel like I was into it anymore. Um, so I took a, I took a hi hiatus from that to like really focus on like writing for Breaker and being at rehearsals and just dedicating all of my time to like, you know, sound the way I want to for this band. And um, it's been great. And I, I don't regret it at all. I, I do want to do theater. I see that value in it. I teach it right now. Um, and it's great to see like how much it like brings out the self-esteem and children. And I, I love that aspect of it. But um, for now, I think like getting out of those audition rooms and stuff was for the best. And if I wasn't doing that, I don't think Breaker would be playing as much as we are right now. So it was a blessing in disguise. Yeah, and I'm sure that um, everything that you've done with theater is going to continue to be like a result in, in great things. Um, I also love that we're like two teachers that are like singing in metal bands. <laughs> it's a really good <laughs> moment. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, which one is the moonlighting job? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so, um, what's your favorite piece of gear or stage wear that you own? Ooh, so I actually have it right next to me. I got this on, I love, like, thrifting and eBay and, like, all my clothes are, like, secondhand in one way or another. I got this, um, I don't know if you can tell, it's a tassel jacket. It's suede. It's from the 80s. It's a chia jacket. And I love it so much. I mean, I... Like being on stage, like it's hard to keep a jacket on for more than one song, but um, I don't know, anything tassels. And uh, in the Time's Not Gonna Wait video, I have like a star sequin shirt with tassels that I got on Depop. And um, I don't know, I, I love those. <laughs> cool vintage collection, awesome. Um, do you have any new announcements for us? We've got the show that's coming up at Century Bar. What else do we got? So um, we're still recording our EP. Um, there's going to be five or six songs and that'll be released like probably end of May. Um, we do have a song that's pretty much ready to go that um, we would like to release at the end of March or early April. Um, I'm commissioning one of my good friends from college to make like a little album artwork for it. Um, so and I'm sure she's going to do fantastic on that. So I'm really excited for everyone to hear that. Um, and yeah. We have that show at Century, and then we're playing a show in Delaware. It's going to be another, like, cover slash original gig. Um, but it's with Denim and Leather, and they're incredible musicians who play uh, a lot of different varieties of metal covers and such. Uh, where in Delaware? It's, uh, it's a place called Halftime, and I believe it's in Newark. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I actually um, teach a couple of classes. Um, in Delaware, whose parents live down there, so I just like use it as an excuse to harass them and eat their food. Um, so yeah, uh, do make sure that I know about it, and I'll also be able to share it with uh, all the people. Uh, awesome. Okay, so where can we listen to your music, and how can we follow what you do? So uh, we're breaker.bandcamp.com. Right now, all we have is time's not going to wait, um, but we'll be uploading the song Fever, hopefully at the end of the month. Um, then we have YouTube, youtube.com slash at breaker, PHL with two Ks. Um, and then Instagram, breaker underscore PHL. And then Facebook, it's breaker with two Ks. I think that'll come up pretty quickly. Yeah. All right. Easy. Um, all right. And then the last part of this interview is a fun and easy game and if you watched any of the episodes you already know what it is but i'm going to hold up two vinyl records and you will choose from one of them and there are five rounds so and uh let us know why you picked the one you picked okay Ooh. girl school girl school was one of the first uh metal bands that i saw that had girls in it i was like oh awesome um and it was their song with motorhead um, do you, so, uh, do you have a favorite girl school track? Probably the one with Motorhead. I mean, I never got like too, too into girl school. I'll be honest, but, um, 
definitely inspiring. And I, they're also coming to Philly soon. Uh, oh. Ben Salem. Uh, uh, at the Ben Salem show? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. I don't I don't remember what date, but uh, I think it's in April. Oh, okay. Um, my favorite girls' school track is Yeah Right, but you know what? I have two uh, girls' school vinyl, and I don't play them very much. Um, you know. But, yep. Yeah. Okay, so... Next. Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks. Tell us what you like about Stevie Nicks. She's a badass, such a badass bitch. Um, I love Fleetwood Mac. I grew up on Fleetwood Mac. Uh, Silver Springs is probably my favorite song, just because of the whole backstory of it and the drama and everything. But yeah, Stevie's a she's a trailblazer. She sure is. She is a smart businesswoman. Um, I've said it before on this series, but you know, she with the first album that Fleetwood Mac released, she took all that money and opened her own label, and she released all of her solo albums on her own label and that's how she got stinking rich yeah exactly and her band bit. i mean it probably kind of sucks to like watch that happen and think she's done that so i think that's got a lot to do with the drama is that you know she was a big star mm -hmm. all right so maybe we all be smart business women like steve nick is that Loretta Lynn? Two. Oh my God. That is such a hard, hard thing. I'm going to have to go with Loretta. That is my girl. I was so sad she passed away last year. Rest in peace. I got to see her in, when I lived in Seattle. Um, and it was at uh, the Museum of like, Contemporary Culture or something. I forget what it was called, but the exterior is a Frank Gehry design. Uh, and she was still an awesome, sassy lady. But yeah, I like Rated X. I like this album. Um, I like the title track a lot. She had a lot to say. Mm hmm And she was one of Elvis's girlfriends. One of many. Yeah, you had a, a lot of girlfriends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ooh, ooh. I'm going to go with Calvin. The queen. Absolute queen jinx. Yeah, queen jinx. Um, what's a, um, something that you like about Coven? Just another thing, like one of those when you're looking for female metal singers, few and far between. I mean, the artwork is incredible. The music's incredible. He's got to love it. Yeah, and I also really like her attitude. She would definitely be like a dream to have on this show. Mm -hmm. um, she, she's pretty friendly, though. She's pretty nice. Talks to me like here and there. Oh, nice. right. Who is the one on? Yes, that was Thelma. Oh, okay. So the girl from East Panera, the walking. Okay, I'm gonna go with Joan Jett just because I'm more familiar. But yeah. love Joan Jett, another trailblazer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. And um, oh, last round. I accidentally put three in the pile, so I think I'm just going to give you the Ooh. first one. Oh, man. Hmm. I'm going to go with Cher. Cher. Love Cher. I love that Cher can really do anything, and she's just been around forever. You know, she's a shapeshifter. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> which maybe wouldn't fly anymore, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think <laughs> that you would like Cherry Vanilla. All right, I gotta write that down. It looks familiar. I've seen, I think I've seen you hold it up on the show. I gotta look it up. That's another good thing. Like you're introducing all these artists that we've probably like never heard of or listened to. Yeah, that's kind of like why I like to end it with this because then it gives the guests a chance to like say a couple things about rock history. And like we look at all these, you know, um, our foremothers and, uh, you know, it's also interesting, I think, to, like, find out, like, um, what the guests like to listen to, of course. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's it. So thank you so much for your time and coming on the show. I feel like that was really short. It was really mm -hmm. short. Was <laughs> thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. And I love everything that you're putting up.
thank you. Um, yeah, keep in touch. Let's hang. We'll do. And hope to see you at the Century Show. Yeah. <laughs> see you later. <laughs>